Hi everyone, let's take a look at number 16 on page 378. The three vectors A, B, and C are of unit length and form the sides of equilateral triangle A, B, C such that vector A minus vector B minus vector C equals to a zero vector as shown. Determine the numerical value of open bracket vector A plus vector B close bracket dotted into open bracket vector A plus vector B plus vector C close bracket. Step number one, before we think about the diagram and look at the angles between the respective vectors, we're going to expand this. So all I'm doing at this moment is I'm copying the question. I am going to use a different color. I am going to draw some arrows for you. So there are three arrows at the top, which I'm going to expand in a moment. There are three additional arrows at the bottom, which I'm going to expand afterwards. So if I start with the first arrow, I take A dotted to A. So vector A dotted to vector A. Plus, I take vector A dotted, dotted to vector B. Plus, vector A dotted into vector C. If I follow the bottom arrows, and I'll put it in the next row here, you can still write across in your own notes. That's going to be plus B dotted to vector A plus b dotted to vector b plus to vector b dotted to vector c now let's zoom in for you when it comes to vectors there's a lot of different properties you want to think about and one of them is called the commutative law commutative law means order doesn't matter so when i think about a dot b when i think about b dot a they are the same so again let's put this on the side for you in case you forgot there's something called the commutative law. A dot B equals to B dot A. So that's one concept we're going to write down. Another concept that you want to think about is when you take the dot product of any vector to itself, that equals to the magnitude of that vector squared. Now, again, in case you're not sure why that makes sense, let's give you a little bit more. When you take a dot a, for example, you're taking the magnitude of a times the magnitude of a cosine the angle between them. And the angle between any vector to itself is exactly going to be zero. Cosine of zero is going to be one. And of course, this will give you the magnitude of a squared. So if I highlight this idea, I'm going to go back and continue here. So a dot a or b dot b, I'm going to go back to this concept or this concept right here. This means I'm looking at the magnitude of A square plus I copy A dot B, I copy A dot C. B dot A becomes A dot B. B dot B is going to be the magnitude of vector B square plus B dot C. Now, if I collect like terms, this means I am looking at the magnitude of A square plus two times vector A dotted to vector B plus A dotted to C plus the magnitude of vector B square plus vector B dotted to vector C. Now, we're going to use the given to continue here. So again, if I go back, I can look at the given. And I know that each side has a unit length, which means the length of each side is going to be exactly one. So again, what is the magnitude of B? That's going to be one. What is the magnitude of A? That's going to be one. What is the magnitude of C? That's going to be one. So we're going to use this in a moment. Now, I'm also going to go through the definition of the dot product. I'm also going to think about the angle between the two vectors. So let's go back and expand this a little bit more. So I'm not going to plug in one yet. I'm going to do all this in one step in a moment. I'm just going to copy this first part. By definition, if you think about a dot b, that is the magnitude of vector a times the magnitude of vector b cosine the angle between them. Now this I do want to talk about. 
So let's go back to the diagram. What is that angle between vector A and vector B? Now, really important that you think about the given. The fact that each side length is going to be 1, 1, 1, this signals to you it's going to be 60 degrees. Now, of course, this is also given in the paragraph, right? Like if I go back, it says right here, and I'll use a different color for you. It says equilateral triangle. So equilateral means each angle is going to be 60 degrees. And of course, it's going to have equal length. In this case, it's going to be a length of one. Now, really think about this in the shape of a hexagon. And this is what I mean. So I'm going to go back and draw this one more time. Now, really follow the idea such as at the very bottom, this is the same arrow. So let me go back to this color. Let's try again. So this vector is going to be C. Now, I'm going to draw two more for you. And the third one. So again, this is the basic triangle. Let me just label this for you. Vector C, vector A, and vector B. At this moment, my concern is, what is the angle between A and B? So I go back and I translate this. So vector B is going to be right there. So let's label this. It's going to start drawing to scale, but I hope you can see if this is going to be 60 degrees. This is going to be 60 degrees as well. So I'm going to write down cosine of 60 degrees. Don't forget, when you think about the angle between two vectors, you always connect them tail to tail. So I'm going to go back and highlight this. This 60, oops, let's try again. This 60 came from the fact that the two vectors, A and B, are connected tail to tail. So likewise, when I look at the next part, which is A dot C, by definition, that's going to be the magnitude of A times the magnitude of C cosine the angle between A and C. Let's go back. Let's identify this. A is right here. C is right there. Notice the connected tail to tail. And we know from the given, this is going to be 60 degrees. So I go back. I write down cosine of 60 degrees again. Always connect the vectors tail to tail. Now, let's keep going. Here's the next piece. I copy plus the magnitude of vector B squared plus, by definition, B dot C is going to be the magnitude of B times the magnitude of C times cosine of some angle. At this moment, I would like you to press pause, find the angle, and when you press play again, I'll be here. Welcome back, everybody. So just in case you're thinking, what is the correct answer? The correct answer is going to be 120. And again, I'm just going to redraw this one more time. Nobody should be left behind here. So again, B, C. Now, why is this going to be 120 degrees? Because 60 plus 60 is going to be 120 degrees. And again, notice the vectors are connected tail to tail. Again, let's highlight this. Write down 120 degrees right there. Okay. So now the difficult part is over because we go back and we put an equal sign here. The magnitude of A is going to be 1. So that's going to be 1 squared. The magnitude of A and B, again, are 1 and 1. So that's going to be 2 times 1, times 1, cosine 60, by the way, it's going to be exactly half. And again, you can always take a calculator, make sure you're in degree mode, and confirm this. Again, the magnitudes of A and C are 1 and 1. Cosine 60 is going to be half. And the magnitude of B is going to be 1, so 1 squared. The magnitudes of C, uh, B and C are going to be 1 and 1, respectively and cosine of 120 degrees. That's going to be negative half. Feel free to confirm this with the calculator. And now here comes the final answer. Are you ready? We're going to do this in one step. 
two times half, that's going to be one. So if I use mental math, I have one plus the one, that's going to be two. Two plus half, that's going to be two and a half. Plus one, that's going to be three and a half minus half. So the final answer is going to be exactly three. I hope this makes sense.